Hello everyone. In this video, obviously, I'm going to talk about dry caddis. In this case, it's CDC and elk, which was invented by Hans Willermann. And apart from this, I'm going to talk about how to create nicely shaped wings, how to secure everything, how to make different shapes of head, like this, and why maybe. And this is my favorite fly, my favorite dry fly when it comes to caddis flies. And I will explain why. So without any further ado, let me go into tying. And I will tie both flies in this video, but you will not have to watch both times having like me tying the whole fly. It's just going to be the differences between I'll tie one fly complete and then what's the difference between two of them. So uh, let's get into tying. The hook I'm, I'm using is Tiemco 900BL in size 14. Uh, the thread is going to be 10 odd, which is rather thin maybe, but I like this one, it's strong. Uh, this is Chinese, uh, so I cannot tell you which brand is it, like I can get it only locally here. And uh, it's quite good. It's polyester, I think, or nylon, not, not sure, one of these two definitely, it's not GSP. Uh, but it can get flat, which is very important in this case. So I'll start with flattening my thread base. I'll just go th through my fingers like so. That's how I get flat base before I start everything. And I start more or less uh, here. And this is going to be my head, the bear, sh bear hook shank. You will see why in a minute or two. So to flatten the thread, counter spin it. So meaning this way. It's opposite than clockwise direction. Clockwise direction would be this and opposite would be this. By doing opposite twist you're actually giving, you're actually untwisting your thread which allows you to lay your flat thread foundation here. So I'll just give a thread layer base here because when I attach my materials when you squeeze materials between two thread layers it's going to be more firm grasp than between hook and the material so for the body obviously i'm going to use cdc and then let me just choose the feather now when you choose a feather uh, what you want to do is you want to choose a feather that has very thin well at that thin as possible rachis so this part in the middle if you have very thick one when you tie off the, th the the feather, it's going to make a bulk over here. It's not very good. So thin barb is actually going to allow you to make more secure tie off and with less bulk. So I like to remove these last ones, last barbules here. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to take one loose turn or two if you want to release your hand. But if because I'm applying pressure, I, I can just allow myself to do like so. And then when I reach like so, almost near the end, I'll take one turn, two turns, and then lift those butt ends here, go with my thread beneath, and then over them to lock them in. And when my thread starts twisting, I just untwist it again in an anti-clockwise direction, as I mentioned before that also creates less bulk on your fly. Now, by using hackle pliers, or whatever tool you tool you want, you can use it even in your hand, wind up the feather on the hook. So, you will see that this thread, and this feather can create very nice body. And by overlapping, you can control how much of the feather you're actually going to use. You can even twist the thread, twist the feather, to make it a little bit more uh, durable, let's say. But it's good if you have those barbules sticking out. Now, when they start to pop out a little bit more, you just pull them away like so. And as you can see, now we are getting into the thicker part of the barb. So. I'm going to tie it off right about here. Now, I'll tell you one important thing about this fly. 
and we figured it out well my friend figured it out uh, while we were fishing for grayling one day and uh, our flies that I tied were uh, flipping and swimming on the side and that was all because I used a feather with too many barbules so if you notice that you have very simple solution just pinch out those bottom barbules uh, this will actually imitate legs maybe even a trailing shock that uh, Cadiz is trying to release off and uh, it's very very lifelike because even when I talk you can see that those barbules are moving which is in water even more exaggerated that I think so I'm just gonna make a nice and solid with flat thread foundation over here because this is going to be my tie-in point for the wing now it needs to be a little bit smoother so your wing has something to lean on okay I almost broke the thread anyway uh, you can use whatever hair you, you have in this case I'm going to use nature spirits uh, natural mule deer uh, what I what I got like I'm texting recently with the uh, uh, with Mr. Wayne and he's uh, he's more or less teaching me not more or less but he's teaching me how to do certain things and he's improving my tying a lot you can see his videos on uh, global fly fisher website just type in for Wayne Lou Allen's tips uh, fly tying tips so he recommended nature spirit hair and you can see here that I have natural white tail deer mule deer this one has like a lot of under fur which is quite weird considering the hair is quite short uh, and I also have elk bull elk which is quite thick and uh, it's stiff it's wiry and uh, it's not very very good for smaller flies so this one is 14 anyway I'm going to use mule deer this is my new favorite that's definitely because this is the, the first one I tried ever because I didn't have a chance to buy it before so I'm gonna take a rather small clump of hair I'll just call it deal deer here because like it's easier and you guys can use whatever you have because I cannot ask you to, to buy something that you maybe don't have near nearby so use whatever you have alternatives are okay you can even even use snowshoe instead of elk or deer hair here it's even better in some ways so it's more durable for sure remove the under fur that's very important I'm doing it with the velcro I'm holding tips firmly and I'm just combing through the hairs and it leaves those this this under fur it leaves it inside and the velcro anyway well, I think I had it enough I'm going to put it in the hair stacker I got a new one for me it's loon zippo or something like zippy whatever quite useful one I'm not stacking it like this I'm stacking it like this so the hair will actually stack itself in the in the indent here anyway you can see it's stacked with some excess hair over here uh, about stacking hair about how to secure the wing about so many things you can also find those tips about with the Vainville Allen they're not lengthy they're like two three minutes clips very easy to watch so the way how he does his hair is first of all you need to remove it in the direction you're going to tie it in then align it remove the, the under fur because removing under fur allows you to stack hair better then just put it on the hook like you want to tie it in what I like to do I place my fingernail over here and I place the hair into my fingernail I allow it to I allow the hair to bend a little bit so place your index finger against the hook twist in a counterclockwise direction your thread and go over the hair I'll remove my finger a little bit so you can see go because when I release the tension it will go towards my finger like so so without any tension I can actually 
grasp around the hair. Now pull upwards with pushing the index finger, finger towards you, pull upwards and then go next one, pull upwards even more and then third one even more and then what I do, I'll place index finger here and pull the thread down. If it doesn't spin around the hook it means that it's locked. But to make sure it's locked properly, do the pressure with your index finger until you finish the fly. I'll do like a couple of more uh, thread wraps through the hair and then I'll gonna, I'm will going to flatten the thread. Uh, by flattening the thread before you will finish the knot, uh, you're allowing your knot to set more nicely because if you have curled, uh, well, twisted thread, when you release the pressure on the whip finish, it can curl into itself and when you tighten the knot it can actually break itself. So do everything with flat thread. Yeah, this seems like flat thread to me. And when you whip finish, notice where I start my whip finish. I started near the hair and then in no overlapping or slightly overlapping wraps I'm gonna tighten the knots, set the knots and then pull backwards toward the hook band. That's how you set the knot properly. Now cut off the thread. Easy way to do that is to pull, create the tension and then just slide your hook, uh, scissor tips into the thread and then you can't even see the tag end. Now two ways to well one way in this way in this manner you can do it actually with a, some razor but I'm doing it with scissors so pull the butt ends in one way pull the tips another way and then just gonna try to make it visible for you guys with one very fast cut cut the butt ends and you'll have a nice nicely secure head. Now when you push it with your finger like so it doesn't rotate around the hook. Now if you think you have too many barbules on the bottom uh, you can actually remove them but don't do that before you start fishing. When you start fishing you'll know if the fly rides properly don't do anything to it. Fish will smack them. If the fly flips on the side, in that case just cut everything that's beneath and your fly will ride perfectly. Uh, from below, you can see, from below you can see how much movement, movement there is. Another great fly tire that I admire very much and he has amazing videos is Kelly Gallup sliding videos. So you can find his way of doing this and I'll do it right now. Uh, he likes to pre-cut the hair before he ties everything in. So stack your hair, remove the under fur, everything as I did in the video prior prior to, to tying this one. When you have everything aligned like you want it, take with your tying, well non-tying hand and you want to cut those tips, buttons here, just above the hook eye. So do it in a one single cut. When you have it nice, straight and flush, you can proceed and then spin your bobbin counterclockwise so the thread will jump into your hand. Now, align this with your hook. Okay, now same as I did before, I will push with my index finger towards me to prevent those butt ends to slide into the direction of my thread. So look at this. I release the thread. There is no tension here and it goes into my hand. So I can make one wrap here and then make a little bit of pressure and you can notice that the head is already forming. Now another one, I'll do the same. I'll pull up and then another one and I'll just go through the hair towards the hook eye and then I'll do the checkup I'll pull my thread firmly I'll do a couple of locking wraps over here 
I'll flip the hook because this way it won't slide off the hook eye. Now I'm gonna flatten the thread, yeah, it's okay. And then with flat thread, do the whip finish. Okay. Now let's compare those two heads. Okay, so this is the way Mr. Wayne Lou Allen likes it with a straight, nice flush cut. It's also the way Al Throt, the inventor of Elk Hair Caddis, does it, but he does it with a razor. And this is the way Kelly Gallup does it, likes it. It's what he says bulbous, it has round shape to it, it adds buoyancy to your fly as well. And it looks very nice. I like both ways. I, I I literally cannot decide which I which way I prefer. I guess I will tie it both ways depending on my mood. I guess no, no need. Uh, while I'm tying both of these, I did almost the exact process. I was doing two wraps loose, tightening upwards, then adding one or two more wraps in the same spot there, and then going through those butt ends. I secured it even more and then while you finish up your fly you end up with not so big thread layer over here or over here it's like super tiny as you can see so it's not distracting from your fly now why I like this fly so much and why I think this is the best caddis ever is because it has so much life incorporated into it and it's easy to tie it's fast and it catches fish because this is the goal of our flies to catch fish by making them in various sizes from like 22 if you can find proper hair for that but you can use snowshoe instead of hair uh, up to 12 10 even 8 you can imitate any caddis with this what i think that's just my opinion is when sun hits the wings the shadow that wing casts over the body will make those colors more dull so the color of the body on caddis is not as important that's why this pattern in natural color of cdc will work more or less for any color of caddis of course you can find colored cdc so you can make it to match the hatch but i don't think it's necessary uh, what i do like to to how do i like to fish this uh, several ways because caddis are complex creatures you can dead drift it as any other dry fly. You can skate it. You can pull it under the water and let it pop out. That also can cause strikes. Uh, skating, dead drifting, whatever. Like do whatever with this fly and it will uh, catch your fish. Of course, if there are caddies around. So guys, I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something new and hope to see you next time.